Without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce you and talk about our first driver inductee for 2024. Born in, New York, and born in Norwich, New York, Mitch Gibbs' path to racing was blazed at an early age. The son of the late Robert and Charlene Gibbs, Mitch was introduced to racing by his dad as he raced late models at Brookfield, Five Mile Point, and Mid-State Speedways. As Mitch recalls, dad loved racing. He was not a mechanic. He would race a few events, blow a motor, and be done. He struggled. He did not have a lot of money to put in behind it, but he enjoyed it. Mitch also added, when I started racing, I did not think winning was possible. I saw how my dad struggled, and I wanted to prove that I could do it and win. Motivation that would keep up until the day he decided to step away from driving. Mitch was too young to crew for his dad. At the age of seven or eight, he remembers riding in the back of the truck with the jack and spare tires and parts coming home from the races because there was no room in the cab. He would find a spot in the truck bed by the exhaust system and keep warm on the way home from Five Mile Point or Mid-State as he did not want to complain or tell his dad that he would not be able to keep going to the races. He was too young to be in the pits, so they would sneak him in and there was nobody to babysit him, so he stayed in the truck and watched. This started his love affair with cars and speed as he grew up. He was always a fan, but that all changed in 1979. At 16 years of age, him and a friend by the name of Herb Bickford and a buddy built a street stock that never raced. Mitch got involved and finished it up. Herb and Mitch took it to the Brookfield Speedway and neither of them wanted to drive it. They went back and forth on this until Herb finally looked at Mitch and said, you're driving. Mitch got in, turned a few laps, and blew a tire. After that magical night, they never raced that car again. In 1980, his dad Bob was racing and he decided to get out of the seat, so Mitch took over the driving duties of the late model. They started racing Utica Rome. The late model was a winning car. Jim Rothwell drove it and won with it. Charlie Castle drove it. In fact, Charlie and Randy Kasaki built the car and Mitch destroyed it. He never won anything with it. He ran five or six races that year, and they put the car aside. It was a learning curve. Mitch was very aggressive when he started. He did not start out slow. He started out wide open, and he had to learn how to slow down. As Mitch says, you can teach someone to slow down, but you can't speed them up. From 1979 to 1982, Mitch would stay in the late models learning how to slow down. The 2G will be honored today, but where did that come from? Mitch was a Dale Earnhardt fan, and Dale ran the yellow number two, yellow and blue Wrangler number two. His late model was a Camaro and painted like Earnhardt. Mitch went to a track and needed to add a letter because there was another two in the pit area, so he added a G and it stuck. When he was not behind the wheel, he would go to Fonda Speedway and be a fan. He would watch the Modifieds, Jack Johnson, Ray Dalmata, Dave Lape, Lou Lazaro, C.D. Coville. He saw all those guys and decided that's what he wanted to do. In 1983, he made the move to 320 Modifieds and raced Fonda Speedway. Mitch saw that the division was growing and taking off and felt that was the place to be. The guys he looked up to were racing Modifieds. One driver he looked up to and guided him early on was Jack Johnson. Mitch bought his first modified from Jack and it was a Troyer mud bus. On Saturday mornings before Fonda, he would go to Jack's shop in Duanesburg and Jack would help him set up the car and show him some of the little tricks of the trade to go faster. Invaluable lessons from a man that knew the track so well. Reflecting the back on the first time lining up against the guys he looked up to, Mitch was nervous and excited. Mitch believes both of the doors on his modified were laying at the track at the end of the race because those guys blew by him so fast. In 1984, he won the Fonda 320 Modified Track Championship. In the big race at the end of the year for the division, his heroes were in that event, a shining moment for an up and coming competitor. Throughout his career, Mitch has raced small block and big block modifieds all over the Northeast, accumulating 179 feature wins. He went on the big tracks. Mitch went from big block, went big block racing with Skip Seymour. Mitch admits it was a, still a learning curve racing at Canandaigua, Weedsport, and Rolling Wheels against established guys like Joe Plazic. 
Mitch looks back and admits they did not run the best, but he gained valuable experience. Mitch's specialty was the short tracks. The bull rings, where he had to be up on the wheel each and every lap. He was a short track specialist in the modifieds. He loved the race of the bull rings that took finesse. He liked it because of the challenge. You're in a corner, you take a breath, you're in another corner. How to restart, thinking ahead, calculating your moves. It sharpened his reflexes, reflexes and reaction time. Short tracks taught him how to race clean. You could not bump and bang. You had to keep the car straight, saving your tires for the right time to go. He focused on being the only one out there to keep his momentum. You can't play defense. It slows you down. Mitch learned he did not need all the power but the talent. Winning to him did not come naturally, but he learned how to do it on the short tracks. As I mentioned, 179 feature wins, 14 track titles, pretty impressive for a guy who thought he could never win a race. Mitch just turned 61 years old a few weeks ago. When asked what his biggest racing accomplishment was, Mitch responded, getting sponsors and taking care of them. He had a lot of help that he could not have done by himself. He enjoyed the companies he represented, how the car was designed for attending company functions, a lot of good guys could win races, but not all could take care of their sponsors. His on-track accomplishments include winning the track championships at Fulton Speedway and Utica Rome Speedway in 1996, which were both NASCAR sanctioned, resulting in being runner-up in the 96 NASCAR region. Winning the $10,000 to win Big Block Oktoberfest at Hagerstown Speedway in 99. Two series championships, which include the Race of Champions Combined Series in 2005 and the Race of Champions North Series in 2006. Winning the Southern Tier 100 twice at Five Mile Point in 2002 and 2004. Having the most modified wins at Afton with 70. And winning the Ice Jam at Fonda Speedway in 2006. This race stands out as Mitch was running seventh with a few laps to go and a lap car got into the wall and came back down the track and took out the leader to fifth place. With the field lined back up, Matt DiLorenzo was the leader with Mitch in second. And Matt had a tire going down and Mitch thought to himself, again, calculating. Looking at the restart, he thought, I can get him. He's gonna push up the track. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened and Mitch won the race. It's been a couple of years since he last raced as he decided it was time because he could not get out of the race car. A bad back and other injuries throughout his career caught up to him. There were nights where he tried to get out of the seat and it felt like someone was stabbing him in the back, immense pain. Sometimes it would take him a half hour to 45 minutes to get out of the car. Lots of racing injuries to his lower back, a few concussions along the way, and he knew it was time not to hurt himself or others. Mitch has not been to a race since he stopped racing. The transition, when done, it was tough because he did it so long. Today, Mitch and his wife Dawn have a camp in Sylvan Beach, so that helps to keep his mind off it. The Gibbs children were always a fixture at the tracks with him and Dawn. Daughter Danielle married a racer and is still as passionate as ever. And a pretty good one too, Brett. Daughter Heather is happily married, and Mitch's grandson raced Mike Rods for a while. Son Todd, who served as his dad's crew chief, is still involved. The passion his kids have for racing came from Mitch's dedication and sacrifice for the sport he loved. This truly is a family sport, and today we recognize all the members of the Gibbs family with recognition as their racing hero is inducted into the Hall of Fame. Please welcome the newest member of the New York State Stock Car Association Hall of Fame, Mitch Gibbs. Congratulations. I'm going to turn it back over to Dan. He's going to take you through the interview process. Is that okay? We'll get All right. Get the pictures first. Walk it out of the way. Uh, Mitch, don't forget you've got these credentials. <laughs> we did different colors. I didn't find a green one at the racetrack. It's probably that one.
So again, Mitch Gibbs, the first of our three drivers to be inducted here this afternoon. Shane will set the hardware down, but Mitch, uh, Shane just made mention you, uh, you don't frequent yourself at the racetracks these days, which many drivers, that's uh, their way of getting away. But here you are at Fonda Speedway. I remember it well when uh, the kid from down in Sherburn uh, came up here in the 320s. You showed up, up uh, you and the kid by the name of Decker were in the 320s then, and uh, you two guys came on, both protégés of Jack Johnson. Um, both go on to Hall of Fame careers, but uh, give me your thoughts about being back at Fonda Speedway. Yeah, it's been since 06 since I've raced here, and um, I've always loved this place. Uh, had a few bad crashes here, and um, not the only track that I ever went away in an ambulance at. Um, but uh, I've always loved this place, a lot of history. Um, a lot of my heroes raced here, you know, and um, this is amazing here, what they've done here. Jackie Leif, I, good job. Yeah, it certainly is, and uh, I don't mean to cut you off there. Uh, no. When we think about keeping the memories, and now you are a Hall of Famer, has it had any time to set in yet since uh, you were given the, the, the word that you were going to be enshrined? Uh, yeah, you know, it has, and um, I thought a lot about it, and, um, you know, there's a lot of big names up there that, you know, I'm on that list now, so, and uh, a lot of my heroes and stuff, and, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's cool. I'd like to thank everybody here for coming today. My family here, right in the front row, um, Niska, um, just everybody involved. Well, you've left us uh, all with a lot of great memories. Uh, as Shane said, uh, you had that corporate side to you, too. You had some great sponsors. You teamed up with some great owners. Uh, you know, we think about Skip Seymour and, uh, and what he added as, as uh, the things that he added to racing without needing to be a guy that was out in front of people. Um, you had great people around you. You showed the success and uh, certainly shows up on paper. I know, uh, like Shane said, uh, we're going to honor another guy that you guys banged some bars an awful, awful many times uh, on the old uh, outlaw circuit, the NASCAR circuit. Um, but um, again, on, on our behalf, the New York State Stock Car Association, we welcome you in the Hall of Fame and uh, thanks for the memories. Okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our first of the three drivers, Mitch Gibbs. <laughs>